whenever I felt a tinge of like, uh, I feel like my basic human rights is a bit violated here. Mm. Then, then that's when I feel like you should think about it. Now you've decided to leave, right? Mm. How do you quit? You, you throw a letter before? Throw, throw letter. letter. Yeah, people Not say a throw a letter. Like environmentally it's... friendly. Hello everyone, welcome to the Hop Pod, where we hop into different pods of spaces people find themselves in during life's transitions. My name is Nick. I'm Q. I'm Joey. And today we have a very special guest, Sam. Yay! Please introduce yourself. Okay, I'm Sam. I am a talent managed by SGAP. Yes. But I think she does more than that. She right? does more oh, than so that. Humble. Not just oh, talenting. Yeah. Actress, singer, singer, content creator, comedian, teacher, TikToker. educator. Ah. Hey, you go on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, I'm also on TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, thank you for boosting my ego, guys. Multi hyphenate yeah. indeed. So thanks yeah. for joining us today, <laughs> Sam. Today we are talking about a very interesting topic with Sam. Okay. okay. Today's topic is when is a good time to break up? Ooh. With your job. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> and how do we navigate this transition? So let's dive into the juicy bits. When do you know it's time to leave your job? Oh. Oh. Like, what are some red flags or signs? Wow. wow. Eh? Nobody you gonna say okay, anything? Okay, I'll start. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I will preface this, and actually this whole podcast, by saying that choosing to leave your job is a huge privilege. Mm. Mm. Not everyone has the privilege to choose and like, leave your job based on ethics and leave based on reasons that are beyond very yeah. serious issues lah, okay? Let, let's take away the mm, serious mm, issues. Mm. Personally, for me, I feel like it's time to leave your job when you spend most of your time resenting everything you're doing, your tasks. You're always complaining about your job. You head into it with bitterness and then it, it trickles down into your workflow and how you approach your work and then it affects your work ethic, I think that's when you should leave because mm. then you become a bad worker. Like for right. me, I will leave blameless. La. Mm. I don't want to drag myself into the, the mess also. But there's also, there are also instances where it's good employer, good worker, but just not the right Not the right not fit. The right yeah. fit yeah. Bad culture? Yeah. Bad culture, sometimes it's the industry. Mm. You know. so Misalignment of, of, of job, yeah, job scope. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I think there are a lot of variables. So like, I wouldn't say it's yeah. only like red flags. Sometimes mm. it's like just not a, a right, right fit. fit. And then sometimes yeah. there's like a push and what I say, what I like to call like a push and pull factor. So, so maybe everything is going great at your job, but then you know maybe you got an offer or another opportunity somewhere. You're going to work overseas. I agree. Like you don't necessarily need to have it bad or bad, right? For mm. you to want to leave, mm. it's more like what else is out yeah, there? Yeah, what else is out there? Yeah. yeah. Mm. But I think like some of the common signs will be things like if your mental and physical health are suffering, mm. um, sense of belonging or like the company culture, uh, work-life balance, career yeah. growth and development, are you learning? Yep. Mm. And then money. Mm. Yeah. So since um, we've talked about all the reasons, let's talk about our own stories. Oh, Oof. okay. Are you ready to spill some tea? Oh, okay. I, I wow. feel like my, my heart is racing. I'm like very, this is my moment. Wow. Oh, I can't wait. Eh. <laughs> Yeah, like, <laughs> well, like I have that. very I like incriminating yours. evidence. Mm. Mm. You're serious or not? Um, okay, it's I worked in an SME. It was very toxic, and it's my first time working in a contract like that. Okay, you know it's a red flag when they say we're family. Uh, <gasps> when they start blurring the lines between your job scope, yeah. and then you start having to do a lot more than you are required to do mm. contractually. Mm. Mm. And then the only thing that they hold against you is your commitment to the company. Mm. And I had a lot of moments where I had to question, am I oversensitive? Is this normal? Mm. Am I being a bad employee because I'm not giving my all? It took a lot for me to realise I don't own shares. If the company does well, I don't do well. Mm. It's very dangerous when a boss takes advantage of the hold they have on you mm. to manipulate you in every situation. Like, it got very bad, right? To the point where when, when all of us have talks with her before we go into a meeting, we need to write down what we're going to say because if we don't, she will gaslight and manipulate us to forget our problems. Oh. And you end up coming out of the conversation feeling grateful for the job. Oh. That's how oh bad God. it was. And I consider myself someone who's very, like, strong-willed. I'm very clear of what I want. They but know how gonna... to play into your strengths. Like, oh, you know, you're so great. Mm. That's why we think you should do this. Oh my god, guess like And then you're like, 
yeah, actually, I am great and I should bank <laughs> on my potential to do this for you. If not, it's wasted, right? Mm. And then you come out of it, a week later, everyone gets into this haze where like, wait, but our original problem was not solved. My gosh. And it's really one of those things where it's very difficult to put down on paper and like create a strong case for yourself, mm. legally or not. They have every thing to, to combat, you know? But makes oh. it very important to draw your own boundaries. Uh. Yeah. If not, it's not going to be healthy for mm. you in the long run or so. Check, bro. Check, it's really check. <laughs> Most Singaporean check. response. Check, check bro. bro. And got no HR. Even more check. Wow, check. Wow. check, check. Wow. So, my story. Oh, wow. Just to give some context, I was from uh, one of my first few jobs. Mm. I was in a media company. Mm. And one thing that I've always um, agreed with myself is that I wouldn't stay at a company for too long mm. because I feel like I need I always have an expiry date right okay mm. but how long is too long I think for my first job I told myself three years max okay mm. just because okay. I, I don't want to get too comfortable mm. reason number two was because um, in terms of certain leadership and management styles, styles and mm. rules I was not super agreeable to certain things mm. um, but it wasn't one of the major reasons lah Ultimately, I did love that place and also like the, the colleagues that I met there. Mm. But the most important reason is cause of my mental health. Ooh. So at that point of time, I was also in a, an unhealthy relationship. Mm. Mm. So it was a time where I had a little bit of depression. Mm. Yeah, It was a very unhealthy relationship where there's like gaslighting and... Mm. and I was arguing with the person that I was dating a lot. So imagine coming to work every day or, yeah. or just functioning as a normal person. Like your headspace is not there Yeah, already. my headspace was really at a very bad place. Mm. Um, to the point where I had to see a therapist. Mm. Yeah. So that was my first time seeing a therapist. And at one point of time, I really thought like, oh my God, I got so like something's wrong with me. Because mm. I've never, I've never done that, and it was such a scary time. Like I was yeah. so young, and aside from mental health, uh, I was falling sick every month. Okay. Mm. And I believe that it was because of my mental health. Mm. Yes. Like you know, your mental health is just bad, and then your body just breaks down. Also, yeah. so the reason for why I left was because I had to prioritize myself, mm. and I had to put my mental and physical health first, lah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. No job will be before my my own health. I think. Yes. Yeah. I think people well underestimate the the mental impact that a bad place can have on your life, regardless of relationship or work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like it can really take a toll on your psyche. Mm. Mm. I feel like any goodbye is not easy. Yeah. Mm. Even if you are from a very good place or from a nasty place where goodbye feels like relief, right? It's still not a nice goodbye. Mm. That's, that's mm. how I feel about it. La. I know of people who leave their jobs on a very good uh, in a very good place, like they burn no bridges, they just move on to a better place, and like the previous company wished them well. Mm. But this is because they're fortunate enough to have a company like that mm. in the yes. first place, also. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So I'm going to just share what's publicly known. So if the audience, if y'all already followed my story, right, this wouldn't be new news to you. Lah. I just left because I didn't feel psychologically safe. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, it was media, which is something way out of my own profession. Like, I studied to be a teacher, you know? Mm. Like, this was just something that came along the way when I was trying to do early child advocacy. So this media company, um, it was fun. I tell you, honestly, right? It was amazing. Like, when I first started, it was, it was mm. fun, yeah. I was a fan of that company also. Mm. Everybody I met there was like, oh, you're a superstar. Like, oh my gosh, I'm working with you now, mm. you know? But slowly it evolved to like, yes, this is my job. I'm not really here to pay, play anymore. Mm. Yeah. So, like, whenever you remove that rosy lens of yours, right, you start to see things clearly and you start to think for yourself also. Mm. So, I never saw an issue until things started to surface and then until I started to feel uncomfortable. So, I guess that was my sign to leave. Whenever I felt a tinge of, like, uh, I feel like my basic human rights is a bit violated here. Mm. Then... Then that's when I feel like anybody out there who's watching this, if you feel like you're a bit violated in a sense, right? Then you should think about it. Like mm. really sit down and pen down your thoughts and see if it's rational or not. Yeah. Or if it's something that you are struggling with emotionally yourself. Then you cannot think straight. Yeah, yeah. you know? I guess that's why I left. Basically, I felt like uh, 
it wasn't right to stay. Mm. Yeah, and it's not like, oh, there's, there are better opportunities out there. That's why I want to leave. Yeah, and just unfortunately, my departure from the company was alongside many other departures in the company. How and, much did yeah. it affect you and how long did, did it take you to recover from that? To be very honest, right, I think deep down, I haven't fully recovered. Mm. Yeah, so it still, it still comes back to me um, here and there. Mm. Yeah, but I feel like I gained more than I lost. A lot more yeah. takeaways. Yeah, yeah. 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 a lot more takeaways. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. In a sense, right, I am way more appreciative and grateful for people that yeah. come along. Yeah, mm. I had a conversation with one of my friends. Right, we we were from. We, we experienced the same negative things before and now that we are in a better place, it's like... Well, night and day. No, we, we look at each other and we say like, what is this real? And to other people, the thing is, to other people within that good space, right? It's normal. Yeah. Yeah. But to us, it's like, wow. Mm. Yeah. So I think that that is what you gain from experiencing the negatives in life. Mm. Yeah. The question part! Commercial break! Um, Sam, uh, you're our guest. You get to pick first. Okay. You can pick a question and answer like spitfire. Okay. Don't, think, don't, much. don't, think, so yeah, much. don't think so much. What's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Wow. Oh, this one cannot anyhow thing. Wow. Yeah. No, just say only. Just say only. First thing. I stress say for her. Okay, live by faith, not by sight. Wow. Yeah. Deep. No clapping? No. Deep. Okay. Yes. Deep. I don't mind the clap. Let's just live by faith, not by sight. Woo! Woo! Okay. Thank you. Thank you. What are you looking forward to this week? Huh? So tomorrow, I think I can sleep seven hours. Hey, that's wow. a solid number of hours. And I'm hoping that on top of that, I will be able to drink three liters of water. Oh, okay. hey, what, what hey, is yo. this healthy living? That's what you're looking forward to. Uh. Sleeping seven hours and being hydrated. Okay, sleep okay. and hydration, guys. It's a very 29 thing. Okay. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Night four gang. Yeah. Night five gang. Oh, our turn. <laughs> what was your childhood dream job? I wanted to be a singer. <gasps> wow. What and, kind? And why are you not? Why are you not? Cannot no. sing lah. No, no, you're not good enough. <laughs> it can uh, sing. It's whether good or not. Yeah. Who in this room would you want to travel with? <gasps> Ooh. Wow. Wholesome vibes. Fun, <laughs> but chaotic. Okay, I'm going to pick Q. Only because <laughs> By I feel together. like you might just say yes to me because you want to be nice. Then she will say no oh. to me. Right? True. Yeah, but I'm fun just to let you know. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so now let's hop back to the episode. <laughs> I know you said that you're still dealing with it now, right? But mm. do you have any tips for maybe like younger people or first wow. jobbers and in things like that? In a toxic place? workplace or who have left a toxic workplace a bit traumatised. How do you uh, deal with that or yeah. like recover from that? Yeah. Wow. You only have one life. Like mm. really, you, you only live once. When you die, you're going to be replaced. No matter how great you are, if you don't prioritise your own well-being, then you cannot take care of anybody around you. Yeah. Mm. Then you just never grow out of it. Actually, yeah. that's a very interesting point. Because like, I've met so many friends, right, who always complain about like work and things like that. They're not happy. But then when you ask them like, oh, why haven't you left, right? They always mm. say like, oh, no, la, if not my team, them shack. Then I'm like, it's not your yeah. problem, man. It's an like altruistic like, thing, right? You, yeah. So yeah. to me, it's like, it's two, it's two different things. One is like, it's not really your problem. Because like this situation, if it's, if it's create, if it's like a, at a point where that everything is reliant on you, right? Then there's something wrong with that system yes. or mm -hmm. that process. And then the second thing is like, you don't see yourself too ups, lah. Like mm. you are replaceable, also. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, like you are a gear in the the machine. And, and you I think the longer you stay at a place where it's not meant for you, I feel like your potential is not reached. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're, you're, wasting your, you're wasting your potential. You're mm. oh for my. what? For someone else. 100%. Yeah. What are some of the good things about your current place now that, that you like? Or like for, and this is open to everyone. Mm. Just my own experience. Okay? I, cannot, I cannot speak for everybody in the company. Yep. Yeah. Um, I feel psychologically safe yeah, mm. to do what I want to do. Mm. Yeah. And I know that I can trust these people. Right. Mm. Yeah. It took me a pretty long time to eventually settle, uh, to sign the contract because... I was so fearful of contracts. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the leaders there are amazing. I know that they're genuinely happy for me when I achieve. Mm. And they will work together with me constructively when I fail. Yeah. So that environment I I really, really appreciate. Yeah. yeah. It it feels like 
I've been blessed, like mm. multifolds oh. because of what was taken away from me. Yeah, wow, that kind of very deep. Like, I oh, thought like maybe like wow, two so hour so lunch break. <laughs> 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 oh, you <laughs> mean you mean massage? Like, 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 the the benefit. benefits. Yeah. Yeah. Got secret lab chair. Wow. <laughs> yeah, but honestly, good <laughs> culture and colleagues yes. are the most important. Actually, I sometimes yes. think that good colleagues will make me stay. Even if it's mm. a good place. Um, oh, I, I, thought I feel so like too. you have no, something no, to no, share. No, no, no. I thought so too. Good colleagues, uh, I feel like my working style and what I look out for and what I value these days um, tend to have me gravitating more towards like larger companies and yep. MNCs now. Because mm. bare basics, right? Just bare b- basic processes like your HR, finance and things <sighs> like that. Do not have to worry about things like that is a blessing. Mm. Yeah. Like, you know... You got insurance. You yeah, know, yeah. like you have how many days of leave. Like if you OT, you will get what and yeah. things like that. All of those things are quite important, lah. Yeah. And I think are very commonly overlooked when you are younger. Yes. Right. Young at time, like, wow, hey, like fun, ah, this job. I just go. Then you don't see how many days of leave they give you. They don't. You don't uh, see yeah. a lot of, of things like that. Um. So it's a tricky thing trying to balance all these different things, lah. But yeah. it helps to like what I did was I listed out everything. Then I give like percentage weightage. What, Pros and cons. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What is most important to me? And then after right. that, like that's that's how I steered like, yeah. like my career. So was that one of the reasons for why you left? Yeah, I think so. Like I think Sam put it in quite a good way. Like sometimes like you feel like your basic rights are not being like respected mm. and things like that. Especially in Singapore, I feel like we have a very like I, I just tahan kind of culture, right? Yeah. I just put up with it because I think our parents, our parents like their tolerance levels were super high. Yeah. Yes. Like they can be yeah. like in a miserable workplace for 20 years and then they don't complain, yeah. they will still yeah. stay. Hey, but I wanted yeah. to add to that, you know, because I've heard so many stories of the very young, like the younger generation now, right? Mm. They will job hop so often and it's just too short a period yeah. that they are inside. So if you're watching this and you immediately feel like, oh, everything is like my basic right is violated, right? Sometimes you have to... Yeah, you must tahan a bit also. Yeah. A bit also. <laughs> if not, yeah. It's true, it's yeah. true. If you go through like six or seven different jobs and then each one like cannot, like probation, you also don't want to pass, right? Yeah. Then need to like introspect Maybe a bit. Maybe you're uh, the problem. Yeah. 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 Just uh. tagging on to that very quickly, right? There's like five main things and there's, it's very rarely that you'll hit all five. So you'll hit at least three or very four. Very good already, is it? Yeah. So yeah. one is distance. Like uh, how far you travel to your job, okay. the actual job, uh, your boss, your colleagues, and your pay. Mm. I'm counting mine. What if one is like obscenely good? Then the <laughs> rest, the rest don't have. Like for example, like the, the, the pay, pay. Is so good. The pay, I give you 50k a month, but then everything wow. else then. 50k jala. a month? Hey, three hour on the MRT, I would do it. Then like toxic <laughs> yeah, boss, right, toxic right, boss, see? toxic colleagues, three hour. Four hours if you MRT. pay me 50k a month to go back to my ah, you <laughs> will, I will tahan for three months. Oh, just to get out of Oh my god, so smart. I will do that. Then I, I can clear my renovation oh my god. money. <laughs> so just now I still say like no job will be before my mental health. <laughs> 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 it, I do. Of mine is my price. Okay, so now you've decided to leave, right? Mm. How do you quit? Wow, Joey confirmed. You, you throw letter like, before? Throw, throw letter. letter. Yeah, people Not say a throw letter. Like, environmentally friendly. <laughs> can you, like, guys. <laughs> throw letter as in you violently <laughs> press the send la, on your. We live in the era of. On your I violently send before. Right, it's like. Wow. Mm. Okay, so for me, I, there was this one job that I had, and it was only like six months because the culture was really off. Uh. And just the whole alignment of what I was expected to do and what actually happened was totally different. I felt like I was wasting my potential at some a place that didn't really like appreciate my forte or like my speci- specialization. So mm. eventually I just decided, oh, I'm just going to leave, man, with no with no plan and I just sent an email. How very millennial of you. It is very millennial of me. Respect. Actually, both my jobs... Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to say that I was very privileged to just... Up know, and go. Yeah. But obviously, I always had a plan in terms of, you know, my savings. Mm. I wouldn't leave Mm. without having proper savings. Um, Mm. But I didn't leave with a plan in terms of my next job. Wow. So actually, before you even talk about the resignation, I think you really need to make that... You really need to make peace with the fact that, okay, I have decided I am leaving. Then you need to have a proper exit strategy. Mm. So guys, don't just like rage quit. Without mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm, without sure. thinking it through, for everyone is different. Like uh, the exit strategy is different. There's no like one size fit or checklist. I think it's always good to, if you have a safe space with your manager or your boss, to bring up your issues with them first. Like if mm. it's pay, and you you are actually very happy with the job, and you say like, you know, if there's any room for a raise, 
it yeah, would yeah, it yeah. would get me to stay. But if you can't, I fully respect that you know the company can't afford that, and then I'm just letting you know that I will leave. So that's what I did. Yeah. Mm. And I actually got a raise that way. Mm. Mm. Another thing to remember is your contract. Please read your contracts. Some notice periods oh. are very long. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Like I had that moment where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna write my letter. I've never like really written a a, a letter in my life, send, and then. I still had to stay for three more months. Guys, serving the notice period is painful when you really are about to leave. Like, when, you're ready to you're leave. Really. La, yeah. And when you're miserable, you have to stay there for yeah. like two, yeah. three months. So I had to kind of like have some foresight and right. be like, okay, I don't think I can do this for another six months. Right. Because three months is the minimum you need to hold on for. Right. Can I stay on for more than three months? No, then you better tender now. On that note, right, the contract, uh, I realised that a lot of people don't read properly. Yeah. Mm. Like, especially when you are, again, earlier on in your career, you assume that, ah yeah, this is standard one, I just signed. Mm. But like, you really need to read properly. If you are in your first job, you get your first, like, employment contract, MOM website is super detailed. Yes. They will tell you what is the standard in Singapore, how many days of leave you're supposed to have, your hospitalization leave, how many MC days, if you work, how many hours they, they need to pay you how much, if you you got OT or no OT, all these kind of things, right? Please check against the MOM website and make sure that you're not getting like shafted lah, essentially. Mm. And the two most important times where you need to read your employment contract is before you sign it and then when you're going to quit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, MOM yeah. website saved a lot of us. Like, yeah. So I have a friend who tried to buy themselves out of the contract mm. because you can if you don't want to serve your full yeah. notice period. You just pay your salary for the like maybe two months, right? Mm. Yeah. yeah. The employers actually refused. They're like, nope, we're not going to let you buy yourself out. And then upon reading the contract can, right? more thoroughly yeah. and cross-checking on the MOM website, she was like, nope, actually I can buy myself out yeah. because the contract doesn't bar me from buying out. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of employers don't even know, like, you what is your yeah. legal right as an employer and an employee? Oh, but I feel like some might, like, they would know. They but know, they, but they try. They feign ignorance. They, they like, pretend like, you don't. They, know, yeah. they, they take they, a bet that you yeah. don't. Yeah, 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 correct. They call your bluff, la, as in you yes. need to call their bluff. Um, correct. So, usually, the larger companies, in my experience, they, it really is quite standard because they, they know, they, they don't want to risk, like, lawsuits and things yeah. like that. But the... Yeah. Smaller SMB. shops, ah, wow. <laughs> they will really try one, eh? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> anyhow, whack, like, clauses in there, wow, non compete. You cannot work in Singapore for two years. You cannot work, like, yeah. for competitor yes. for five years. Well, the non compete one was confusing for me. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, in media. So I asked a few friends before, la, like, like law- lawyers, um, like, labor lawyers. It's very hard to enforce in Singapore. Yeah. But a lot of times, like, companies will still put inside mm. there. And the more, unreasonable or ridiculous it is like wow you cannot work two years three years kind of thing then the even more unenforceable it is mm. Mm. yeah so yeah just a heads up another thing is if you leave with grievances right don't air your dirty laundry like online mm. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like, it'll yeah, do yeah, you yeah. way more harm than good yeah. yeah are we airing our dirty laundry right now no uh, quite big right we are, yeah. we are big. Except for Sam. Uh. I think... <laughs> <laughs> I'm so worried now. No, okay, I think SK it's important you. that we mm. share. Because when I was leaving, I kept Googling a lot of things and I couldn't really find uh, references. Door, uh. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. these things can help someone make an informed decision. Informed, uh, not rash. Yes. Like a calculated decision that you know for sure you are comfortable with. Because yeah. not everyone has the same experience. Mm. Yeah, I mean, don't go onto LinkedIn and make like an angry post and tag your your yeah. like colleagues that you don't like and like, hey, yeah, screw you, man. You made my life miserable. I'm gone. <laughs> do yeah. people do that? No lah. I, I think <laughs> most people have the sense not to do that. But yeah. like, the thing is, even if you don't care about your previous employers that you have left, mm. What will your next employers think? Yeah. That, oh, yes. I'm hiring somebody that if they're a bit upset, right, they will air their dirty yeah. laundry and they will post on LinkedIn. Just they don't will burn post on bridges. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. it gives you like a reputation as like a, wow, this person is a bit temperamental, you know. Mm. So since we're talking about quitting our jobs and the transitioning phase, are there any challenges and obstacles that we need to prepare ourselves for? I think the biggest thing and the, the, the one key factor in like hindering your resignation is securing a paycheck. How is your bank account looking? Mm. What is your monthly obligations? You got car, you got kid, you got mortgage, that kind of thing. Obviously, the less of these things you have, then the more flexibility you have. Yeah. Back then, I for both my jobs that I left, right, mm. I left without a plan. I was young. So 
back then, obviously, you kind of still have your, your parents to back you up for a yeah, while. Like, really I had man. no responsibilities yeah. at that point of time. And um, I was like 23, 20, 22. Mm. So I left without a plan. In terms of like savings, I just made sure that I had like three, three to six months worth of savings yeah. um, to last me for to survive, you know. But eventually, at the third month mark, like panic a bit. Right, right, like the bank yeah. account like dropped a lot. Uh. Drop a little bit. <laughs> Cannot take grab. Cannot, Cannot take grab. Food. Okay, like at that point, I didn't do much. Every day, just stay in the room and cry. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's where you start looking for a job. You know, yeah, I think uh, you need to kind of understand the timeline. And hearing from different employers and different companies will also take some time. You, yeah. don't, you cannot expect that they'll reply you in like, what, three days, one yeah. week. Sometimes it takes one month, you know. Mm. And yeah, so yeah, that's, yeah. that's one thing. I think that's the other thing. Like a lot of people after they leave, especially if they leave without a plan, right? Then they kanchong. Then they rush into the next one. Oh. Like the first job offer I get, yeah, I just take. Uh, I like, I a bit like panic already. Mm. Then you end up in this cycle of like, oh, you end up in a job that you're not happy with. Yeah. Yeah. Then you go through the same thing again. Yeah. Then you you rush again. So take your time. If like really like be practical and realistic about how much time do I have, um, and don't rush into the next thing, mm. But actually, for me, right, I I left without a plan and I left with no adequate savings. I knew that if I didn't leave, something would give. And similar to you, I just kept getting sick mentally. And mm. I'm like, I don't have enough savings to last me. Because they always say you need at least six months. Six months is a privilege. Some people don't even have two months. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And like, I had big expenses coming up. Mm. And mm. I knew that that money would go to that and I wouldn't have enough saved up. Mm. But I chose to leave anyway because I wasn't going to sacrifice my mental health anymore. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And I think people put the pressure on themselves to find a career immediately. But you can, if money is truly the, the one issue, right, you can always get a part-time job to mm. get your bare minimum sorted yeah, out first. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? You yeah. don't have to put so much pressure on yourself to find an immediate career that you will advance in. Yeah. So actually, we all recommend having a side hustle uh, while you're working your full-time job. So if ever anything happens to your full-time job, at least financially, your side hustle... Still got a bit of copy money, can take grab. Why is Sam smiling? Huh? No, because we all have side hustles. Yeah. Right? A lot of people do the side hustle thing because it's their hobbies. And if right. they can make you some extra cash, why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yes. it could be a reason why they've decided to stay at their full time because this supplementary income makes up like yes. that balance oh, for them okay, too. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's all about mindset, man. You know, my husband once told me, right, that he doesn't mind like getting a job that he's not fully satisfied with. Mm. But he used that money, right, to satisfy himself. Oh, yes. yeah. actually that's my mindset also. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Not not everybody can like, you know... Um, your passion, your, your hobby. Have your passion be your job and then still be paid well. Yeah. I feel like nowadays I try to detach my personal hobbies and interests from work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we talked about, you know, like quitting your job when 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 you draw the line between when you should leave or when you should stay, um, when you can tolerate and you can push through and when you shouldn't but you know given the economy right now quitting may not be the best option la, for mm, you yeah. and for everyone it's rough out there okay? tough times it's, 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 it's tough times, times we're living yeah. in man but if you're listening and you identify as someone who is also thinking of quitting uh, hope, we hope that you know you will find mentorship someone that you can trust to really like walk this journey with you and to support you on this journey yeah. mm. not, not us Maybe uh, we are as clueless as yeah, you are. Yeah, we're learning yeah. with you guys. We are growing with you. Through the transitions. In the pots, pots of, of hops. spaces. Wow. Pots yes. of spaces. The hot pot. Yes. Yeah, on the wow, hot pot. Yes. yes. Thank you for joining us on The Hot Pot. You can listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts and Me Listen. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to us. And thank you, Sam, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Okay, see you guys in the next episode. (laughs) Bye. Bye.